Hello, happy Wednesday, or whenever I end up uploading this, or whenever you're watching. Um, I hope that you're having a great day, evening, whatever it may be. Um, this week I'm just filming a more traditional podcast, so I have five finished objects to go through, um, one work in progress, and a couple acquisitions, so let's just get into it, right? All right. The first thing that I finished, which was a whip in my last podcast, are these socks. So these are the Mix It Up socks by This Handmade Life. They're um, a very simple ribbed sock with just a lot of um, color changes. So it's a pretty scrappy project. There's like a slightly different rib for the cuff and then you just do uh, two by one ribbing throughout. And then I chose to do an after hot thought heel, but there is also an option for a heel flap. And I might remake these in the future. They're just a really great scrap buster and I love a ribbed sock for the fit. Um, I'd probably do a short row heel in a future project though. So yeah, I have these two socks. You can see they're not the same as far as when I put the colors, uh, which I really like. I will say, which one is it? I think it's this one. Yeah, I made my second sock like four rows or so bigger, longer. So you can see when that's held up. Um, I don't know quite what happened. I was kind of relying on counting how many of each color I did to see like, okay, I want the same length. So how many total rows did I do in this? And I didn't count each one. I kind of just guessed based on the size and I did a couple wrong, so I ended up with four extra rows, but you know, it adds to the scrappy nature of the project, so it's fine. But yeah, these are a really nice sock. Um, I also had to go back and actually make my short rope for my afterthought heel a little bit smaller, but overall, good project. I'm happy with the finished object, and they're just really happy. Um, now that I've had a little distance from them, I really like them. At first I was a little bit worried about the colors of looking too much like, I don't know, that we, that monkey in the early 2000s that a lot of younger girls were obsessed with. I don't know its name, <laughs> um, but it always had like brown and yellow and green. Um, I also thought it looked like just bananas, like the life cycle of a banana. Um, but now, I think it is giving what I wanted, which is kind of this garden, earthy, like harvest color scheme. So happy with those. And I did these for the, a knit along that was hosted by Woolberry Fiber Co. It was the summer bash knit along and read along. It was an interesting knit along. There was no hashtag or anything. So I don't quite know how I was meant to actually participate, but I, tagged them and stuff so we'll see if anything ever comes out of that I think there were supposed to be prizes or something but not really sure but still a fun knit I also read um the benevolent society of ill-mannered ladies with these socks which was a very good read so overall good experience um so yeah the next thing well do I want to go order I think I'll go in order of finished objects so the next thing I finished were these socks. So I have both. Um, this was a test knit for Michelle, F I wanna say Frazetta is her last name. I know how it's spelled, but I think it's pronounced Frazetta. She goes, her Instagram is Mishi Fraz. Um, she was wonderful to test knit for. It was a really great group of test knitters too. Um, and we did these, this is called the Wildflower Bloom, Bloom Sock and it was my first color work stranded color work experience. I've done a little bit of intarsia and it was really fun. I was worried about the fit of these, but they stretch out nicely. Um, and it's a really nice motif. So this pattern's out now. I highly recommend knitting it. I knit mine. The cuffs, heels, and toes were all in a US one. And then I did the rest in a 1.5. And they fit me fine. Um, I'd say a lot of the other test knitters had to go up to a US 2 um, to get a good fit or just size up. So if you're planning on knitting these, look at kind of the project descriptions to see what needle sizes people used and if they sized up or not. So, but yeah, good project. They're 
a little bit dirty. And I also, I used for this, the Malabrigo Sock is the green color and the color Jasmine. And then this purple, silver, it's hard to tell it's purple. I promise it is. Maybe, oh, you can see it's purple, right? Um, this color is Maidstone by Wandering Flock and it's in their Baby Paca base, which is a superwash alpaca nylon blend. So it has made these socks really fuzzy between both the superwash with no nylon and the alpaca. I think they're a little bit more prone to felting and fuzz, which actually I think is really beneficial for a color work sock to kind of meld the colors together a little bit more. Um, at least that's my opinion. Some other people would probably have the opposite, but it's still like distinct enough colors, um, but they're just, you know, the yarn's kind of sticking together, which I think gives it a nice effect and makes them very warm on your feet and has helped my floats inside because they're kind of, you know, they have a layer of fuzz over the float, so I'm not catching them on my toes or anything. So good knit, fun experience. Um, I actually, well, one of my finished objects is not with me because it was a sample knit. So I sample knit a pair of socks, the Cozy Autumn socks, and I'll have a photo, um, for Poppy and Spruce Fibers. Um, Abby is the dyer behind that company and she's releasing her Cozy at Home fall collection of yarns. Um, and so she asked for some test knitters, selected me, and I knitted these socks for her. So it was a really great experience. Um, the socks turned out amazing. I definitely need to make them for myself one day. And the yarn was amazing to work with. The rest of her collection is also looking amazing. So she finally has started posting the collection reveals so I can show the socks. So I'll have a photo up. Um, but yeah, that was a super great experience. And she was so nice. I had like 30 grams of yarn left after finishing the socks and she let me keep it. Um, so I decided the next thing, oh wait, this is changing my order, but I'm talking about them, so it's fine. The next thing I knit up is these socks with the remaining Blood Moon. So this color is the Poppy and Spruce Blood Moon, and then this is Emma's Yarn Hella Hank in Arches. Um, and the pattern is the, oh my gosh. I don't remember the name, it'll be on the screen, um, but it's a pattern bundle by Stone Knit. So there was this pattern and then the, um, an acorn. I think it's called the This Is Autumn sock set, but I'll, it'll be on the screen and in the description, but super fun knit. I, at first was like, I started it and I kind of feel like they're giving more of a maple, maple syrup or like maple candy vibe. If you've ever had that, then what I was wanting, which was more, I basically wanted socks to go leaf peeping in, at least in Colorado, it's a very big thing to just, around this time of year, probably in the next two weeks, go drive up in the mountains and see like the aspens and the maples all changing colors. And I decided I needed a pair of socks to do that activity this year. So I'm very happy with them. I will say, <laughs> I don't know what I did differently with my floats between the two, but one of them fits a lot better than the other. The other is like a struggle to get on. Um, I can get I can get them both on, so I'm calling it a win. And maybe I can, some of the floats are long enough that I might up actually be able to snip them and then weave in the ends. Um, so I may end up doing that for some of them. I think, yeah, this is the one that, it's got some long floats. So yeah, you can see, oh my gosh, like that's, that right there is one float so maybe did that too long um so i mean i'm not catching my toes on them as i go into them but they are a little bit hard to get on this one specifically this one i can get on fine so hopefully with time it'll kind of loosen out i can also cut some of the floats that are too long weave in the ends um so they're still wearable and I think this is a really great use of the rest of this yarn. So I'm finished up the Blood Moon color and they're so pretty. I don't know, I'm very happy with this finished object. Um, they may not fit my original vision of like looking more like, I don't know, just driving through the mountains to look at leaves. Um, instead they look a little bit <laughs> like 
maple syrup. Like you'd see this on a jug of maple syrup, um, this pattern with this color scheme. So that's okay though. That's also cute. That's also fall vibes. Um, and I think I always do this where my whips are my most recently finished objects. I'm like, I don't know if I like this. And then a couple months later, I'm like, oh no, I do really like it. I just, I stare at something too much. Like it's inherent while you're knitting, you have to look at every stitch. And so you're looking at this a lot. So this was my most recently finished object. So I'm kind of like, in a week I'll like these. Right now I'm like, did I choose my colors well? But I think I did. And I like that I did the cuff in the blood moon as well. And the leaf pattern is so cute. So happy with these overall. We'll let the colors continue to grow on me. Um, I've sent a picture to like three or four friends to be like, what vibe is this giving? <laughs> and People only say it looks like maple syrup when I point it out, so that's good. It's probably just me, but yeah, happy with these. Um, and then this was actually my second to last finish object, um, but I started talking about the Blood Moon color, so I wanted to show those socks. So I finished this about a week, maybe a week and a half ago. It's wrinkly, um, but this is the Camisole Number no. 4 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It's a very popular pattern, um, and I knit it in this... Zakami yarn. Um, it's a blend of linen, alpaca, and silk. Um, so it's a really nice, like, lightweight cooling fabric, but still soft and acted like normal yarn. Like, I didn't really experience any finger pain. And the color is Exordium. And oh my gosh, it's beautiful. The texture and then the light variegation where it's like mostly this like colored yarn, but you've got kind of like rainbow colors in it that's the bag beautiful in love it's wrinkly because i i was in california this weekend um visiting my grandma so out kind of between yosemite and um lake tahoe if you're familiar kind of gold country um and i brought this with me to wear so i took some photos in it and went to a winery in it so got some good wear out of it and actually just I'm such a procrastinator with unpacking, so I just took it out of my suitcase. Um, so it's a little bit wrinkly, um, but it loosens up nicely with a little bit of wear. Um, and you can see I decided instead of just knitting I-cord straps, I would make them ties so these can untie and I can adjust. Um, I've just heard from a lot of people that, you know, the I-cords stretch out a fair amount as you're wearing this garment. Um, which makes sense. It's a lot of a lot of weight to put on a how many? I think this is a four stitch, um, yeah, four stitch I cord. So I decided to just ensure the longevity of my garment by making them ties. So if it stretches out, I can just move it up. So I'm really happy with this garment. I'm excited to wear it some more. Um, even though it is, it's finally starting to feel like fall this week, but this will still be a really great piece to layer um or in some of the warmer fall days gonna be lovely so so happy the texture makes me just like uh, gasp i don't know it's so good like i'm so happy with it i was worried about the texture before i blocked it but now it's just stunning i'm happy about it and it feels so good so excited to wear this one a little bit more um, you know, I finished it right at the end of summer, but I still think I can get some good wear out of it. So those are my finished objects. I need to slow down on socks. <laughs> um, four out of five <laughs> finished objects being socks is maybe a bit excessive. Um, but I've been on a sock kick. Um, and a lot of them, you know, one was for a knit along, one was a test knit, one was a sample knit. And then one was to like use up some bit and bits and bobs of yarn and a seasonal cast on. So I think now I'm kind of gonna step back from socks for a little bit, um, focus on some more garments now that we're really entering fall and I can make some sweaters. So excited about that. I'll definitely still mix some socks in, but yeah. Finished objects, done. Um, my current whip is the uh, Killarney blouse by 
um, Paisley Knits. So this is a test knit. She put out the call like a week ago or two weeks ago, um, filled out the application, fully not thinking I would get it because Paisley Knits is um, a yarn dyer. So this is her first foray into pattern designing, but she has a very established yarn dyeing business and so had a lot of people on her Instagram, Explore Knits reposted her test call. So I was kind of thinking like, I'll throw myself in there, but probably there's like a lot of people that are going to apply for this and I probably won't get it. But um, last Sunday I got the notification that I did or Saturday and I'm so excited about it. Um, so this pattern is really cool. It uses a, a Iris, mo Irish moss stitch. I don't know why it's hard for me to say those words together, but Irish moss stitch. So the texture is like this. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit see-through, but you get the idea. Um, and you can see I'm knitting it. I'm actually, I was planning on making a cumulus blouse with this yarn, but instead I'm using it for this, which I'm excited about. Um, but yeah, this piece, I'm knitting it in two strands of a mohair substitute. Um, but there's also knitters that are doing it in a strand of fingering and mohair, just fingering, just decay. So there's a lot of variety in how you can knit up this pattern, like at what, not what gauge, but at what weight. Um, and you still get this uh, the same gauge. Some people have had to change their needles a little bit, I think, but generally... I got gauge um, immediately for this on the two strands of fluff. Well, the gauge was based on the sample of Surrey and fingering weight. So I think it's a good pattern for getting gauge using different weights. Um, and the way it is gonna look, it's a raglan design. So I'm currently on the raglan still. It will be closed up. It's a raglan v-neck with I-cord edging um, throughout. So on the bottom of the body, the sleeves and the neck all have I-cord edging. Um, and so it's pretty similar to the cumulus blouse other than the stitch pattern. And then of course, other than the fact that you can use multiple different kinds of yarn to knit it. So I'm very happy that I got this call. I think that the texture has been really great. I think I've mentioned a couple times that fall inspiration to me, a lot of it is texture. So a lot of my plans involve a lot of textured knits. Um, I'm just really enjoying like a more complex knit fabric. So this is both marled between this color, which is Gragron by Midnight Soul. These are both Midnight Soul by Camarose Yarns. So this is Gragron and this is Lease Beige, which means light beige. And I think this means gray green. So I'm, I'm learning some, I think it's Danish. I'm learning some Danish just through knitting patterns. <laughs> I also learned Kastionbrun, which I was talking about in my last video of a Camarose yarn I was gonna purchase. Um, it means chestnut in Danish. So fun fact of the day, I'm probably not pronouncing Kastion, Kastionbrun right, but chestnut, cool. Makes sense, it was a brown color. Um, but yeah, back to this piece. I'm really excited about it. It's like, to me, it's kind of an elevated cumulus, but you can also make it the way I'm doing it, but you can also make it with fingering decay. So it's gonna be a really versatile garment. And the sample is knit up in uh, a hand-dyed yarn. So it's a great way to have like some level of texture, but it's not super overwhelming. Um, so you can still have fun with the yarn you choose. So for me, that means marling. Um, for other test knitters and the sample, it means using hand dyes. So I'm so excited about this piece. It's going to be really nice. I'm just really trying to like run through the raglan. I'm going on a business trip um, beginning of next week. And I would really like to kind of be just knitting in the round, whether on the sleeves or whatever, um, by the time I go. So I'm almost done with my raglan increase repeats and then I can join in the round soon. And then I'll probably take a break to do the neckline edging and then do the arms just so I can just knit the body down. 
because I would much rather, I think I have enough yarn. Um, I have like, I think 872 yards and with a 10% ease or extra amount, um, the pattern needs like 930 yards. So I'm pretty close, but if you take away the 10%, I'm like totally fine. Um, but I would still rather, and I like to have my garments a little shorter. I mostly wear high-waisted pants and my hips are a lot bigger than my waist. So cropped things usually suit me a little bit better so that it's not hanging around my hips. So I'll probably end up adjusting the length a little bit anyway. So I'm not too worried about yarn, but I would much rather have like to make a decision about making the body shorter than not be able to finish the arms um, or not be able to do the eye cord edging. So I'm just gonna take a break, do those, and then go back to body knitting. So yeah, this piece is coming along. Expect to finish it in not too long. Not that knitting's a race, but it's coming and it's pretty. It's really cool. I like just like looking at the fabric. Um, it kind of looks like a pineapple or something. I don't know. It's gonna be fun. And it's so soft oh my gosh so yeah thank you for letting me wax poetically for a moment about that piece um so yeah those are my finished objects and works in progress I'm still I mentioned in the last podcast I did that I'm working on this scarf um I'm adapting the pattern from the Loki bandana which is a free pattern it's by Loki bold knit I tested it a while ago um and I'm just adapting it into a scarf for my mom I've made no progress <laughs> there's been too many things coming up so not worth sharing but that's still kind of on the back burner for me as well so those are my knitting things I have yarn or acquisitions I should say so we'll get into that and then yeah this might be a little bit shorter of a video this time. So we'll see. Let me grab the yarn. I don't know why I always feel like I need to show things in chronological order. No one, no one else cares. No one else knows. Um, but this is the first thing I purchased or received, I should say. And this was actually an acquisition in my last video. I showed it as the mystery advent so I opened it all so this is all the yarn I'll give a, I'll give each piece its moment um but this was from the Scranton Stitcher a really great dyer um she just had a collection for rumors an album by Fleetwood Mac which was stunning I think that just closed so we'll see what her next collection is but a couple months ago she offered a end of summer 14 day advent of yarn um, based off of the show Gravity Falls. So it's called Summer at the Shack. That's the thing. So this was the little poster for it. Um, she has a really nice note on the back. And yeah, so it was 14 days. You open one yarn a day and then the last one. So they're all 20 grams except for the last day, which was 100 grams. So opened them all, had a lot of fun with my boyfriend going through and trying to guess what the inspo behind each color was before we read the name. So let's see, I'll pick out, they're all so good, but this one is called Pine Tree, so it's inspired by Dipper. It's messed up down here because my cat has developed a love of yarn. So he, in the past week, has gotten into my yarn like three or four different times and ruined a few skeins. I had to throw away a skein of Midnight Soul, um, throw away a couple acrylic skeins. Just, I, <laughs> I'll try to insert a clip or a video of just the chaos that he has been causing in my life. So hopefully he stops doing that soon. Um, well, I've, I've locked away all of the yarn. So it's all in plastic bins with lids now, or it's in a glass cabinet. So. You can't get to it but if you notice any of the skeins are a little bit funky that would be my cat um but yeah pine tree so let's see i'll just grab up a couple i don't need to give you all the names um but i'm trying to just grab some here's a little bouquet i'm almost there yeah here's the bouquet of yarn you can see all of them 
So 13 little guys. Um, some of my favorites. This one is called Shooting Star, so it's inspired by Mabel, the twin sister. Um, this is It Works for Pigs. There's Mabel has a pet pig on the show, so there's this. Um, yeah, just so many gnomes was a good one. Also kind of wrecked by my cat, but super fun. So, and then also the journal was a good one. I like that. Um, they're all great. And I loved too that the, some of them had like really good references. So I was really glad that I'd watched the show. Like the week before I kind of watched the two seasons of the TV show in preparation of opening this. And I was really glad I did because some of them, for instance, which one is it? This one is called Dusk Till Dawn or Dusk to Dawn, um, which is the name of a convenience store they go to in one episode. And so when I first opened it, I was like, what is this? Um, and it took me a while, but then I was like, oh yeah, it's the convenience store. And so I was really happy I'd rewatched the show and I remembered like this convenience store in this episode or yeah, Mabel does wear that, or this one is called See You Next Summer. At the end, everyone signs a note for Mabel, and they're all using, like, different colored pens, kind of like you would with yearbooks at school, so they made her a little See You Next Summer letter where they all signed it, so, you know, it's got, like, the white and then all of that, so I was really happy I'd rewatched, and I could really just appreciate all the colors to their fullest extent, <laughs> um, and they're all so great. And then the... 100 gram skein which this yarn feels really great by the way it's like I don't know I think yeah it's a 75 25 but it just I don't know it feels really nice so I'm excited to knit it up it's called the shack um so that's you know the location where the show takes place it takes place in a town called Gravity Falls in Oregon and then Grunkle Stan and the kids live at the shack um which is the mystery shack and so yeah it's got some red it's got a lot of red, these brown tones, um, some speckling, and then like some lighter colors down here. So, and some green as well. It's kind of in the middle of a forest. So I'm really excited to knit this up. I don't know what yet I will do with this or honestly a lot of a lot of these. That's why I was kind of mentioning, maybe I'll make another pair of mix it up socks. Um, Cause I have, I have so many minis at this point. So, Another one of those is probably my future, and this will probably be a really nice pair of socks. I just haven't excited, decided what exactly yet, um, but I think these would shine really nicely in a lightly textured sock, because um, there is variegation, but it's not super intense. So we'll see, but yeah, I was very excited about that. It was so fun to open. Um, and then next thing, my amazing friend got me this. So it's a pink or a strawberry cow um, from Kata Ceramics and it's a yarn bowl. So you put the yarn through here um, and then you have it sitting in here and you knit from it. Um, it's so cute. <laughs> I love it so much. I was so surprised it wasn't any sort of occasion. She just saw this dye or this potter Potter, this person who makes ceramics and thought of me and got this for me. Um, so I was so happy, like set an alarm and everything to be there for the restock. So I'm so happy. <laughs> um, it's so cute. Um, so I've used this a couple times. I actually, for a few projects, I just had the yarn sitting in it and then had it going over um, because I'd already started knitting on it and couldn't put the yarn through the little hole. Um, but I've also used the little hole. It's great for gauge swatching, honestly, when you know you're going to finish the project. Um, it's great for a little gauge swatch. I'll probably, I'm making a baby hat um, probably in the next few weeks and I'll probably use it for this because that's a really quick knit so it can live in here. But it's so cute. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, I also, it's great. I have a bunch of like wound up mini skeins that kind of are just a mess otherwise. So I've been setting them in here as a little way to display them and keep them tidy so I love it um so yeah that was really sweet of my friend and it makes me happy so I'm glad she did that and then my final acquisition is this skein of yarn which not my cat's a dog got so it's also a little bit messy um my uncle's dog 
was running around the, my grandma's house with it before. Like, I didn't even realize my uncle did, so I'm glad you didn't wreck it, but it's a little sad. Um, but this is from Juniper Moon Farm. It's a baby alpaca blended with nylon. So it's a sock yarn. Um, Harriet Fine, I think is the name, and it is so soft. <laughs> it's like, I really like the blue color. It's got a really nice halo and it's, yeah, 75% alpaca, 25% polyamide. So I'm excited about this. This will be a really nice, I think, like cozy, simple pair of socks. So I'll probably do some lace. It's got some nice little bit of color variation. Not a ton. I mean, it's all the same. I think it's more just, I think it, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, but there is a little bit of like color check, visual color texture. Um, I can't quite nail down how, but it's there. So I think this will make a really nice lace, lacy, like maybe bulkier, cozy pair of socks. So I'll probably make a pair of socks just to like stay indoors and really make them really fun. So do a lot of lace on these. Um, since they probably won't be as durable with that much lace and then they'll be my like nice cozy winter socks so I'm excited about this and I love like I got this um, at a local yarn store near my grandma's house so I love getting a little souvenir skein um, I wasn't gonna get anything in the store until I felt this yarn and it's so soft so I'm really happy about that I'm really happy about all of my acquisitions I am trying to slow down on purchases I think that it's just good to do um overall like I'm definitely guilty of overbuying yarn because it's pretty um so I'm trying to slow down so I think these are all pretty intentional of a gift um something that I actually my boyfriend bought this advent for me back in May um and then one souvenir skein so I'm trying to slow down um, so hopefully next podcast, my acquisitions are shorter. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with all these pieces. Very excited to plan things for them. Um, very excited about my whips, happy with my finished objects. Um, so yeah, everything's great in my world. Apparently is what I'm saying. Um, it is, everything's going really well for me. So I'm happy about that. Oh my gosh. Okay. That was so me and my boyfriend just like jumped in this room to scare me so we're back um I was almost done anyways but I just wanted to share um in my last video I said I would just share in my podcasts like one or two things that I've been really enjoying and so this week I have two things um first of all I've been watching the show Lost which I know it came out years ago but I love a good going back multiple years to watch a TV show. I think it finished in like 2011 or something. So maybe 2007, I don't know. <laughs> a long, t like a decade or more ago it finished. Um, but I love watching shows like that. I loved rewatching Vampire Diaries. Well, not rewatching. I loved watching Vampire Diaries a few months ago, almost a year ago. Like I watched X-Files not that long ago. So it's been a really, good comfortable show for me um great for knitting too like it's just enough engagement to where I'm like wait what's happening <laughs> like there's a lot of mystery in the show so it's enough to keep my attention and keep me interested in the show but it's also like kind of mindless enough and there's enough drama that I can just knit and miss a little bit and be fine and still get the gist of the show so I've been really enjoying that. I think I'm on like season three, so we'll see. I've heard it has a really disappointing end, so we'll see. Uh, maybe next month I'll come back and be like, that was the worst show ever, but for now it's good. Um, so if you are looking for something to knit to and you also like a little enough to keep you engaged, but not too much that you don't know what's happening, it's a great show for that. Um, okay, great to knit too. And then um, the other thing, I recently listened to Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. It's by uh, Gabrielle something. I'll put the name on the screen, but it was an amazing book. So I listened to it. Um, maybe I should have read it, but the, the narrator was also amazing. So I am happy I listened to it. Um, it's about this like 
this trio of friends that make a video game together and then kind of following them and it's just like really sweet they're it's um sadie one of the characters is um jewish and her grandma was part of the holocaust her and then there's sam who is half white half korean um and then there is um marks who is japanese and korean no japanese i think he's japanese and korean as well so it has a really a lot of great things about identity especially asian identity in the united states um it was just a really good read i highly recommend it um if you are looking to something to listen to while you knit it's great for that um i listened to it in the car i like I just stopped listening to it. I was listening to it at work and it was kind of trying to, it was like making me cry. So it is a little bit sad at parts, but it's, it was really good. Um, so highly recommend that. So yeah, I guess my two recommendations this month are media, which goes along. I'm really trying to buy less, be more intentional about the things I bring into my life. Um, so I think that to media recommendations is aligned with that. Obviously you still have to like buy a Hulu subscription or buy the book, but at least it's not just a thing that sits in your house. It's a used thing for your brain. So yeah, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about everything I'm knitting. I just, I love this time of year. Um, I always feel like I, September is always a good month for me. Like good things always happen in, in September, so very happy. Um, life's going good. Knitting's going good. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I would be interested to see if you decide to knit anything that I shared or what you're working on as well. Please comment it. I'd love to read it. Um, otherwise, you know, I'm always, I love to connect with people on Instagram or leave a comment here. Um, I'd really love to hear about your knitting as well. I mean, I made this whole channel to talk about my knitting, so I obviously want to hear about yours as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.